What if I told you your fridge, that quiet humming box in the kitchen, could stay cool without using gas, without chemicals, just magnets? Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But it's not. Researchers are already turning this futuristic concept into reality. And beyond just being novel, this tech could solve a huge issue baked into the very core of modern cooling. An issue even my favorite heat pumps can't escape. Because here's the thing, we desperately need alternatives to refrigerants. The same chemicals that let your AC blow cool air are also major contributors to climate change. Enter caloric cooling, a set of solid state technologies that cool using physical forces instead of phase changing gases. And one specific method is showing real promise, magnetocalorics. A US research team says this tech is not just an experiment, it's already beginning to rival traditional cooling systems. But how do you chill something using solid materials and magnets instead of a refrigerant gas? What makes magnetocalorics different? And could this new tech redefine the meaning of a fridge magnet? Let's explore it. Let's start with why we even need to rethink how cooling works. Most of the cooling devices in your life, fridges, freezers, air conditioners, heat pumps, all run on a process called the vapor compression cycle. It's a time-tested method dating back to the 1800s. At its heart, it relies on refrigerants, chemical compounds like hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs that absorb and release heat as they change phase between liquid and gas. This is how heat gets pumped out of your fridge and away from your living room during summer. The vapor compression cycle works in four steps. A compressor raises the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant gas. The condenser turns it into a liquid, releasing heat. The expander drops its pressure, making it cold. The evaporator lets it absorb heat from the surrounding air as it turns back into gas. The cycle repeats, and it works. But there's a catch. HFCs and similar refrigerants are potent greenhouse gases. Some are thousands of times more damaging to the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. When they leak, which they do during manufacturing, operation, or disposal, they contribute heavily to global warming. That's where caloric cooling comes in, offering a way to ditch refrigerants altogether. Caloric cooling is a broad term for cooling techniques that rely on the physical manipulation of solid materials. You don't need to boil or compress a gas, you just apply force. This force can be mechanical stress, elastocalorics, electric fields, electrocalorics, or magnetic fields, magnetocalorics. We covered elastocalorics before, cooling by stretching special metal wires. It's an amazing concept, but magnets offer a different path, and one with decades of research already behind it. Magnetocaloric materials heat up when magnetized and cool down when the field is removed. This phenomenon is called the magnetocaloric effect, and scientists have been aware of it since the early 20th century. For years it was mostly a physics curiosity. But now, thanks to advances in material science and manufacturing, it's being built into actual machines. Let's dig in. Magnetocalorics follow the same four-step logic as vapor compression, but they swap out refrigerant gas for a solid magnetocaloric material, like gadolinium or lefesi, lanthanum iron silicon alloy. Here's how it works. Magnetization. When a magnetic field is applied to the material, it aligns the magnetic domains inside it. This causes the material to heat up. Heat removal. A working fluid, often water, absorbs this heat and carries it away. Demagnetization. Removing the magnetic field lets the domains fall back into disorder, cooling the material down. Cooling. The cooled material can now absorb heat from its surroundings, just like a traditional refrigerant would. The real genius is in the cycling alternating between magnetization and demagnetization in a rotating pattern so that different beds of material are always in different phases of heating or cooling. In late 2024, the Ames National Laboratory in Iowa, part of the U.S. Department of Energy, announced a magnetocaloric heat pump MCHP that can match traditional systems in cost, size, and efficiency. Led by researcher Julie Slaughter, the team built a cylindrical device housing an active magnetic regenerator, AMR. The AMR contains nine beds filled with tiny gadolinium particles, 
each about the size of a fine coffee ground. When exposed to rotating magnets, these beds alternately heat up and cool down, transferring heat through a flowing liquid. But the real innovation came when the team swapped gadolinium with lanthanum iron silicon. Not only is it more cost-effective, it also boosted the system power density. Basically, more cooling per kilogram of device. That's a huge step toward making these systems compact and cheap enough for home use. The Ames team estimates it'll take another three to six months to fully evaluate performance, but their projections already suggest magnetocalorics could rival traditional systems up to one kilowatt of cooling power, enough for many residential applications. While Ames focuses on R&D, Europe is sprinting toward commercialization. First up, Magnoric, a French-German startup that showcased a working magnetocaloric fridge at Chilventa 2024 a major heating and cooling trade fair. They didn't just talk about the tech, they served cold drinks from it. Magnoric is now entering the pre-industrialization phase, working on systems over six kilowatts for supermarkets and data centers. They're clear that while the tech is still evolving, industrial use is imminent. Not far away, Magnotherm, based in Germany, already sells magnetocaloric chillers. Their entry-level model goes for around 6,500 euros. Their flagship product, the Eclipse, is a sleek two-door unit for retail and medical use. Both companies are targeting large-scale systems, for now. Home fridges are still too costly, bulky, or low in performance. But that's why labs like Ames are pushing optimization to shrink this tech and make it accessible. So why not just go with elastocalorics? Some researchers argue they're already more efficient, and it's true. Mechanical stress is often easier to apply than magnetic fields, which can require strong and expensive permanent magnets. But elastocaloric materials wear out faster. Repeated bending can break them down. Magnetocalorics, meanwhile, have a head start in maturity and reliability. Some magnetic materials, like LAFESI, are already well understood and available at scale. Still, both approaches face hurdles. Rare earth magnets are in high demand for wind turbines, EVs, and electronics. Supply chain issues could slow magnetocaloric adoption, just like durability concerns limit elasticalorics. The truth is, we need all hands on deck. There's no single winner yet, just a shared goal. Solid state cooling with no harmful chemicals. Here's where it gets exciting. As magnetocaloric devices get smaller and more affordable, we could start seeing compact cooling units for medical vaccines and lab use. Fridges in off-grid homes powered by solar and magnets. Entire HVAC systems that cool without releasing refrigerants. It's a vision that's still taking shape, but it's no longer a distant dream. In the same way that LED bulbs slowly replaced incandescence, solid-state cooling could slowly phase out vapor compression. It won't happen overnight, but the first cracks in the old system are showing. And the best part? This is a clean energy solution hiding in plain sight in the form of solid metals and spinning magnets. So, next time you reach into your fridge for a cold drink, think about what's humming behind that door. It might not be a chemical loop forever. One day soon, it could be magnets. Just magnets. And when that day comes, fridge magnet might mean a whole lot more than a souvenir from your last vacation.